Hi everyone, Gemma here. Thank you for watching today. So in this video, we're going to be creating this five by seven shaker gift box with those lovely gold sequins there. This cute Santa image, I think is gorgeous. And we've got Believe on the front there, lots of interest, and you can sort of see what's inside. I can anyway. <laughs> You're probably getting a bit of glare from my light today, but there's some lovely chocolates inside and there's plenty of room to also add a gift card. To make the base of the gift box, you need a piece of nine and a half by seven and a half. And along each side, you want to score at one and a quarter. So just rotate your cardstock and score all four sides at one and a quarter. Then you need a piece of nine and five eighths by seven and five eighths. And we're going to score again at one and a quarter along all four sides. Like so. So taking the largest piece, the nine and five eighths by seven and five eighths, we're going to fold and burnish along the score lines. As usual, all the folds are mountain folds. Before we snip into this and assemble the lid, I want to cut an aperture in this because I've got two panels here, this gold glitter card stock and this white panel and I want to create a shaker gift box. This stunning Santa image I've heat embossed and coloured with my alcohol markers. Everything that I'm using in today's video is from the Simply Cards and Papercraft magazine issue 247. So you've got this lovely stamp, some sentiments, a believe word die, and then you've got this die here to create your aperture. So this die fits lovely around the outline of the stamp. I think mine is slightly off because um, when I put it in my stamping platform, I lifted up the stamp just to make sure that there was no air bubbles underneath and it may have distorted the image slightly. So just be mindful of that when you're stamping yours. But I think I've got quite a good fit and I'm happy with that. So the first thing I'm going to do now is run this through my die cutting machine. And then what I'll do next is line this up to the gold panel, draw around the die and then run that through. And then the same for my lid. Now it's entirely up to you, you could attach these together and then run them through your die cutter machine. I sometimes find with multiple layers, it needs to go through several times and you can sort of get some markings from your plates on your cardstock. So I'm going to opt to just run one piece through at a time. So there's the aperture cut in that piece. As I said, I'm going to line this up on the cardstock, make sure that the panel is even on all four sides. Place the die back in. And then I'm just going to take a pen. Hopefully I can see that on the glitter. Oh. Make sure I'm back central and just draw around the dies so you know where to place it. It's going to be quite difficult to see on the gold cardstock, hence why I'm using the pen. There's my aperture now cut. I was slightly off, so I just trimmed a little bit extra off this side, and then that will all be covered by this panel. And then what you can do just to make life a bit easier for you if you do only want to run the top panel through just as as an alternative again you can take a pencil and draw around the aperture like so again make sure that this is central within that panel and you can just take a craft knife and roughly just cut around that aperture and then you know 
however you centre it on your panel that there'll be enough clearance. So I'm just going about one eighth of an inch um, around the outline of this die, like so. So quick little tip there, if you're ever like me, <laughs> I always get my alignment wrong. As much as I uh, try and centre everything, make sure that it's all lined up. Sometimes I'm off by one eighth of an inch. So just a quick tip there, if you're cutting an edge like this, circles, squares, they're a lot easier to line up. But just something with a, um, a different edge. So I'm happy with that. Um, I want to add acetate now to behind the gold piece. So that sits on the front there. And then I'm going to pop more acetate on this piece and pop this up on the gold mirror card. So I'm gonna bring in my two pieces of acetate. Um, I appreciate it's quite difficult to see on camera. Um, but you want a piece that is large enough to sit behind that aperture. So you want something that is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. As I said, one piece will go behind the white panel and the other piece will go behind the gold panel. So I'm just going to grab myself some red liner tape and I'm going to go around the outside of this aperture and attach the piece of acetate. So this edge is obviously going to be slightly harder, but I'm just going to make sure that I've got the larger surface area there just covered with the red tape. And then I'm going to add just some small pieces in some of the areas like so. so. Make sure you burnish that red tape so it's got good attachment to the cardstock and there's no air bubbles. And just go ahead and remove the backing. And just place your acetate piece then over the top of that aperture. And again, give that a good burnish. Then you want to attach your gold panel on to the top of the lid so I'm just going to add some red tape again to some of the acetate pieces and then attach the rest with some collal glue so I'm just placing this flat on the lid of the box so again just place that acetate over the top and burnish the red tape down so now I'm going to go in with this silicone tape and again go around the aperture with this and I'm also going to go around the edge of my white panel just so that I've got um, the same amount of dimension on that panel. So add your tape and then just check before you remove any of the backing that that's sitting on there nicely and there's no dipping within the cardstock. So I am just going to add a little bit more tape. So I'm just going to remove the back in from the silicone tape and then add my sequins and place my panel over the top. So I've just got some gold sequins from my stash and I'm just going to pop a few just in that aperture there. Make sure they're all spread out so you don't sort of have one big mound in the centre. And now I'm going to take a deep breath <laughs> and place this down over the top. There we go, we've got our shaker lid. Isn't that sweet? So while we're still working on a flat surface, I just want to add the pattern paper to the lid. And then we're going to um, cut into this assemble the lid and then we'll do the base and I've just got some final decorations just to add on the front there. So for the pattern paper I've got two pieces of 
six and seven eighths by one inch and then two pieces of four and seven eighths by one and they're going to go on the outside of the box like so so i'm just going to attach these now with some clar glue just to make that lid really nice and strong and then i'll come back to you so i'm just attaching this last panel i forgot to mention that the pattern paper is part of the free downloads with this magazine so you can print this off and there's some lovely pattern papers in there and it all works really well together so that's available to download from craft world Okay, so some really simple construction on this um, take one of your longer edges working left to right we're going to come to the first score line and cut up to the first score line then work your way along to the next one and again cut up to the first score line take a little wedge off each square like so and then rotate and do exactly the same on the opposite side cut up the first score line cut up the second and take a wedge and we're going to do the same assembly for the base of the box so really simple construction but a lovely gift box and it's a really good size I'm going to be adding some chocolates in mine and a gift voucher. So now we've got our tabs cut, we're going to flip this over. And as you can see, the lid is quite sort of messy from the inside. I doubt that the, the recipient will look at that. I'm quite happy to leave that. But you could trim a panel, cut the aperture into it using the die that's included and then just overlay that over the top and that will hide all of that um, adhesive there if you want to do that. So just grab in some quick grab glue and add in some to the two tabs here on the left hand side, right hand side, sorry. I'm getting confused. I don't know if you can tell but I've got a bit of a cold so it's uh, causing me some brain fog <laughs> and then just hold the two sides up together forming that really nice right angle so you've got a nice nice square box and again do the same on the opposite side and you've guessed it we're going to do the same then for the opposite corners so there's the lid now constructed. I think it looks really lovely. As I said, I'm going to do a bit more final decoration on the lid, but just going to set that to one side now to let that dry. Now working on the smaller panel, again, fold and burnish along the score lines. So to go inside the base of the box, I've got two pieces of cardstock and the gold glitter measures Now I've just remembered that I didn't I don't think I give you the measurements for the lid but they're the same as these as I said I have got a bit of brain fog going on so sorry about that I'll um, leave a note at the start of the video um, when we're going through those panels and I've got a pattern piece that measures six and a half by four and a half so I'm going to attach those two together and then that's going to go inside the box like so so i'm just going to attach those now and then we're going to snip into this and construct it construct it in the exact same way so I, i'm going to go ahead and do that also so as i said you just come across to the first score line 
and cut up. Second score line, cut up, cut some wedges into them, bring the sides up and you've got a nice square box. So I've filled my box with some chocolates. I've got a piece of green cardstock that measures half an inch by six and five eighths. And I'm just going to add that on the front there just to break up some of that white. And in the same glitter cardstock, I've cut the word believe. Again, this is from the exclusive gift. I'm going to pop that on there. I'm just going to add a few sequins on the outside just to bring those into the front of the gift box. I'm going to add some of this baker's twine just to tie the corners off. And I'm also going to use a half inch circle punch and just punch some finger pulls on the sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I'll come back to you once it's finished. So there's the final project. Lovely shaker gift box. You can sort of see the goodies inside. You could add some tissue paper if you want to hide the gift. Got those lovely finger pulls on the side. And I just love this Santa image. It's so sweet. And that gold embossing powder just sets everything off. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have, please hit that like button. It does help and support my channel. And I really appreciate it. The magazine that I've used in today's video will be listed in the description box below. If you happen to recreate this gift box or anything else inspired by this YouTube channel, my Facebook, Instagram or TikTok account, then please share on the Facebook group Gems Gems. It's a lovely small community over there. Everyone is really nice um, and we would love to see your inspiration. So I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.